What today brings is an opportunity for me uh, to stand in front of you and chase a dream. Brett Bielema says his dream is to bring Arkansas its first ever SEC championship. The Hogs haven't captured a league title since 1989 under Ken Hatfield, a span of 24 years. The new head hog plans to snap that streak by following a blueprint laid out by the most famous head hog of them all. Frank Brawls may be the smartest coach I was ever associated with. Back in the mid-1940s, Baylor assistant coach Frank Broyles recruited Hayden Fry to play quarterback for the Bears. Fifteen years later, Broyles recruited Fry again, this time as one of his assistants in Fayetteville. He was one of the first coaches I hired here at Arkansas, but Hayden was a coach on the field. Phenomenal man, and I copied so many things in my coaching techniques from Coach Brawls, and particularly uh, making the game a lot of fun to play. Fry's one of many Broyles protégés who went on to become a head coach. In fact, Broyles produced so many good coaches from his staff, there's an award named after him for the top assistant in the country. That trait passed on to Fry and eventually to Bielema, who's already had three former assistants become head coaches. All these guys coach for me. And this is quite a staff here. There's Bobby Stoops and Dan McCorney and Barry Alvarez and Bill Snyder. If you're going to be successful, if you're going to be a winner, you've got to surround yourself with winners. That's why I had 22 assistant coaches become head coaches. They were winners. Coach Brawls did the same thing. It's a team game. It's a team sport, and you have, your head coach can't do it all. He, all he can do is organize and lead. The work is done by assistant coaches. They're handling on the field seven days a week, and they've got to be able to motivate them and be able to select the right ones and keep them interested in wanting to be winners. And that's where you win, is get good assistant coaches. Bielema's play style also harkens back to Broyles, built on a steady foundation of running the football. I love that philosophy because in my day, that's, that's what we most of us did. I believe balance is the key. Um, th th there's one guiding light through this whole thing is when we've had championship level teams, when we've been great, it's a balance of 200 plus rushing and throwing. Um, that's the formula. Change of pace. And there's times that uh, when you want to run the ball, get in a formation that you can run it. Don't try to run it from a passing formation. You, your percentages will be very poor. During his tenure at Wisconsin, Bielema's teams averaged 214 rush yards, but at no sacrifice to the scoreboard. His Badgers put up more than 32 points per game and even got accused of running up the score in 2010 after hanging 83 on Indiana. It's a very physical type of game. It's a very um, downhill come at you running and throwing the football. And there would be teams that would just kind of, hey, enough is enough. Um, and you'd see guys kind of running the ball and they might fall down instead of making a tackle, instead of going making that that hit on that running back, maybe they didn't pursue so fast. And I think when you can impose your will on a man, uh, I, I stole a quote, but I think it was three years ago, we were playing a non-conference opponent and the coach uh, said they took our manhood from us today. And I think when you as a man hear another man say you took their manhood, that, that's, 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 that's caveman stuff, man. That's medieval times. That's, that's, that's kind of saying something about what you are. He may be a caveman on the field, but he's a rustaman off it. After a spiritual experience on a cruise, Bielema regularly listens to reggae music and wears sandals around the office. Just got off the, the, the ship and walked over to a little local joint that was playing some uh, some reggae, had a live band, everybody was happy and it kind of just made a huge impression. I bought their CD and um, kind of gathered a couple other CDs along the way and came back to uh, Iowa City and I'd listen to reggae all the time, you know, and I was uh, really began to captivate my mind. And then it was probably the second or third year I was on a cruise and really noticed that everybody was just so happy all the time on the ship, off the ship, on these islands, and everybody was wearing either no shoes or, or sandals the whole time. And it made a huge impression because we got back, it was the middle of February, and uh, I went and did a speaking clinic uh, for uh, the Glacier Clinics in New York, in New Jersey I believe it was, and the guy that met, picked me up was mad. And there were people that were walking on the streets, they were mad, and they were all in tight shoes and boots, and uh, you know, I always said, you know, the world would be a better place if everybody could wear flip-flops so 
Uh, yeah, I always we, we have flip flop Fridays, which is uh, Friday, which is the day before the game. I want everyone to be as loose as possible. So out of practice, I'll be wearing flip flops and just want our kids to, to know that, hey, I'm relaxed. You can be relaxed. Too. When he's away from the game, Bielema is a family man at heart. And now he has a family of his own, ready to plant roots in the natural state. It's kind of a neat, neat period in my life. I waited 42 years to get married uh, uh, and, and married the, the best possible person I could ever meet on this earth. Um, so really enjoy just growing with her as a couple, as a husband and wife. Uh, I'm planning to start children in Fayetteville, you know, so it's uh, kind of one of those things. Uh, we started off with a puppy this Christmas, so uh, uh, we're growing in that one already. We've got plans, but we're, this is such a new change for us that our plans are kind of being pushed a little bit further so a little on hold but we've got plans we've got intentions and we definitely want to start a family sooner than later i'm excited there's a little golf out there in, in arkansas I'm, I'm excited that's one of the things that i really truly love to do is you know play around the golf with a couple buddies and, and just get away from it a little bit turn the cell phone off and decompress the new head hog brings each aspect of him to arkansas in many ways, he's still the small town kid who worked hard for everything he's earned and never forgot where he came from. He's a rare combination, a barbarian exterior, guarding a tender soul and a hungry mind. But most importantly, Brett Bielema is a winner. He has a background of uh, what it takes to win. He's, he's been in, in tough situations. He made him, he's made him successful. And that's what we have to do here. I think it all starts with Brett Bellema believing in Brett Bellema. I don't think there's a task that Brett has ever encountered that he didn't think he couldn't whip. He has that much confidence. He's very positive. The Arkansas players are going to love playing for him. Sadly, football season still more than a half a year away, but you'll get your first glimpse of Brett Bielema in coaching action in the upcoming spring football practices. Now, before we wrap up here, we want to thank Coach Bielema for granting us this unprecedented exclusive access into his life, his family, and his friends. Not to mention Coach Hayden Fry for welcoming us into his home in Nevada, Kai Tagami here in Northwest Arkansas, and Reverend Dan Swenson for catching up with us on the phone. Also want to thank our sports director Jason Carroll and chief photographer Ben Goodwin for putting in long hours to help out with this show. This has been a Razorback Nation special from the hog farm to head hog. We hope you enjoyed it. I'm Adam Alter. Thank you for watching. Good night.